Hello. Awesome. So, should I start again? <laughs> and one more thing, the complex orography, uh, complex mean you can see this region has high mountains, large ocean body, and from uh, from the south, the, uh, the Sahara Desert. So it has it has a complex topography. So the complex topography also uh, 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 helps to generate the weather system during the winter season. So, for example, uh, the uh, the region sometimes triggers the development of storm center in itself, and they feed on the moisture and gain energy from the Mediterranean Sea. So this is during uh, winter season. Sometimes we have the Saharan cyclones, uh, which normally causes uh, uh, dust events over Mediterranean region, and eventually they they can take place as uh, medicans. We need, I mean to say the tropical cyclone like structure in the Mediterranean Sea. And from north, from north and northwest, we have the cold air advection in the domain in the, during the winter season. And from south and southeast, the Red Sea Trough actually plays a role, major role, over, uh, over the um, East Mediterranean region and Middle East to, uh, uh, for the precipitation during the winter season. So all these uh, features actually contribute to this region for the precipitation during the winter season. So, the main rainfall mechanism in uh, in the Euro Mediterranean region actually comes from two ways. One is through thermodynamical process. So, in thermodynamical process, actually interaction between surface heating and atmosphere. So, it uh, gives the convective process originating on the warm sea, and then due to the orographic structure, it will give you. Uh, it can give sometimes. Uh, uh, the convection and then moisture. For example, when there is southerly or southeasterly flow, or southwesterly flow in the stream from the from the south, you will have the orographic lifting uh, in the northern uh, side of the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So in this way, the orographic lifting also helps in the development of the storm uh, uh, weather system. But this is actually we known we call this as thermodynamical process. But during winter season, the most Dominant phenomena is the uh, is the dynamical process. I mean the uh, the western disturbance. So the trajectories of westerly low the troughs, which actually comes through the uh, North Atlantic Ocean, they uh, they can get, uh, they actually provides uh, uh, the weather system through the Mediterranean Western Mediterranean region. And sometimes these systems go through the north, but they generate gives the Secondary low pressure systems over the study domain. So mostly system I will uh, will discuss you next. So most of the system actually dwells inside as a secondary system in the study domain. And another thing is northern hemisphere circulation patterns. For example, these patterns also contribute well to the precipitation during the winter season. The Scandinavian phenomena pattern we know, and East Atlantic West Russian pattern also contribute other than the North Atlantic uh, and NEO. NAO is actually the big, uh, we can say, the major contributor uh, to the precipitation over the Euro-Mediterranean region. And during the uh, last few days, we have a lot of discussion how positive NAO and negative NAO behaves and in which phase we can have more weather systems over the Euro-Mediterranean region. And uh, during uh, positive NAO, most of the system actually goes through the north over the northern Europe. So most favorable is for uh, the precipitation of storm, uh, storm uh, penetrating in the Mediterranean region is the negative annual phenomena. So frontal activity, we can see here from the diagram, cold air advection actually comes from the north northwest with the system. And from the south, we have warm air advection associated with the jet, uh, jet stream, subtropical jet, uh, jet stream actually helps for the uh, warm air advection from south and uh, uh, south east. So in this way, 
the frontal system or uh, 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 winter season storms actually takes place over the Mediterranean region. And this is the uh, most dominating phenomena during the winter season. So what is the reason why I have selected the uh, winter season? So this is the annual cycle you can see here, annual cycle precipitation in the study domain. And this is the seasonal cycle of precipitation in the study domain. Here you can see during the winter season, DGF has the highest value of precipitation. Objective. So, and so previously have, have been discussed many times and many people even uh, Michael Evan also have discussed how ENZO has the impact over uh, European precipitation. So it is actually uh, a global phenomenon. It has become a global phenomenon. Everyone, most of the researchers have a have lot of discussion how ENZO uh, uh, can, uh, can generate uh, the precipitation for different regions. Because uh, as I mentioned in earlier, from ENZO, most climate signals or seasonal predictability even, we, we can, relay, uh, we can uh, 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 make some relationship with, uh, with ENSO and we can have a best seasonal predictability for our own regions. So it, it actually helps us. So, but if, in my study now, I'm going to make, uh, see how the, the, the atmospheric bridge, I mean the storm centers, has the relationship with ENSO and uh, how they actually behave during the early New Year's warm, uh, warm Central and Pacific Ocean days. In my experimental setup, I have used uh, six hourly and sub anchor ENLS data set from 1948 uh, uh, to 2016. And for correlation purpose uh, with ENSO, I have used the global SST data set with resolution one degree from which is available from 1991 to 2016. And to check how the uh, storm, uh, frequency of storm tracks actually have the reflection in my study domain. And, the, uh, and what, uh, what actually uh, I have hypothesis for this study, it actually has the impact or not. So for this, I have used the global uh, observed data set, global precipitation uh, climate product GPCP, which is actually available from 1979. In methodology, I have used the storm tracking scheme, which is actually developed by Moray and Seymour in Melbourne University in 1991. So this is the state of the art uh, uh, now, the storm tracking actual model or objective scheme it, by which you can uh, identify the systems, you can track them, you can make your statistics. So this is actually a very helpful uh, uh, tool and it also, it is also uh, that, uh, sensitive to temporal resolution and even spatial resolution. For example, if you, if you will use the daily data set in this model, you will have the less storm centers. But if you will use the six hourly, for example, you will have the system, more system. And even if you, make, if you use the data three hourly, then your storm centers will also increase. But there are some other things. For example, I first uh, before this, many people used uh, this uh, objective scheme for uh, mean sea level pressure data set. And even in 2016, we have published another paper over Eastern Mediterranean storm tracking. We, uh, we have used uh, this scheme for 500 hectopascal to track those systems which have been affected uh, to the precipitation over Saudi Arabia and adjoining region. But for this study, we particularly, we have made the op optimization in, in this uh, uh, model and we have uh, uh, we have employed uh, to, uh, the data 200 hectopascal data set to track the large scale systems actually because at 200 hectopascal the system has more longitudinal uh, dimension uh, sorry latitudinal dimension so it has a large spread so we have employed the uh, you use the data 200 hectopascal in the scheme this scheme actually uses relationship basic how it identifies the basic mechanism, in short, how it identifies the system and how it will then track the system. So identification, the first step is the identification. So this scheme actually, first of all, will prepare 
the geostrophic water city, uh, uh, water city uh, greater data set from which it can uh, create the, uh, uh, which actually, oh, sorry, which actually comes from the Laplacian of geopotential height, this relation. So Laplacian uh, of geopotential height is also can be considered as the intensity of the storm centers. Okay. So the positive values of the Laplacian of geopotential height indicates the intensity of the storm center. So the model, first of all, will identify the low pressure system. Then it will search for the positive value of uh, Laplacian of geopotential height. If both conditions will be fulfilled, then it will say this is a low pressure system. Otherwise, it will neglect. But for, for these things, we have to give some threshold values. So these threshold values come from the climatological analysis of, uh, of uh, these characteristics. So I will not go into detail how. So I just started for the uh, sensitivity test. I just took the one of the event uh, from 23rd to uh, 30th January 2009. First, it was developed over the Atlantic Ocean, and this uh, event. Uh, already has been discussed in the uh, laboratory uh, paper study there is a full uh, there is a study which actually uh, they have made the whole discussion related to this event so the purpose was to take this as a case study is that we have to check first that our storm tracking model is working well or not so for this we have made the sensitivity uh, test and we have took the threshold values when we uh, reached at a step that this is exactly the same system where from it was started and it, it has some proper end up and there is no contradiction between the observation, I mean, I mean reanalysis and storm track the, and the storm track the, uh, trajectory, then we said, okay, so the model is uh, storm tracking objective schemes are working well, we can make our long period uh, analysis. So due to this event, uh, it caused the uh, uh, human casualties, and the Euro Mediterranean region as a whole sum suffered about six billion dollars and more it was the most costly event of the uh, uh, 21st century and this was declared as the most deadliest system of the 100 year history of the Euro Mediterranean region. So it caused heavy rainfall, flash floods over the central and even over eastern parts of the Euro Mediterranean region. This is the system which is identified by the storm tracking model. So I just took only two of the time steps to describe how it actually had worked. So the system on 12 UTC 27th January is identified by the model over Gulf of Geneva. Okay. So it, it was actually started on for, uh, uh, identified in this study domain on 26 at this position. But just to, for the explanation, I just added these two pictures. So this is the uh, cloud spectrum of that of that day. So we can see how it is uh, it coincides with the synaptic uh, synaptic map at 200 hectopascal. So this is a second one is for 20th January, and the, this is the cloud spectrum of 20th January uh, um, uh, taken from the uh, uh, European map set. This is the precipitation of the same day. So you can see here how upper air system actually uh, generates the precipitation. Because as I mentioned before, this is a winter season storm center. This is their crest is this big, and this is a frontal system. So it will generate, it will, it can generate the precipitation at the surface. But for example, sometimes we have a low pressure system at the surface, but we have no precipitation because Upper is, is not supportive. There is no trough, for example, at 500 or 200. But when there is a trough or a low pressure system at 200 hectopascal in this study domain, then definitely we will have a precipitation at the surface. So the storm center, uh, it, it was actually named uh, first uh, when it was in the Atlantic Ocean, it was named as the storm class. And when it was uh, entered in the uh, Euro Mediterranean region, it was named as the storm class two. So the system actually started from here on 26th January, and it ends up over the Western Med, uh, Black Sea on 30th January 2009. So the genesis region of this uh, uh, storm center was Gulf of Geneva, and the lysis region was the Black Sea. 
So here, this is a subset, subset of the storm tracks for 10 years from 2000 to 2010. Actually, it shows uh, the picture where the storm center actually comes uh, uh, during the winter season. So the source region, major source region is, is the Mediterranean region itself. Most 60% systems origin dwells uh, in the Mediterranean region. 20% systems comes through the Atlantic Ocean. 15% of the systems uh, come through the Northern Europe, North, Northwestern, and Northern Europe. And 5% system actually retrieve back to the, uh, uh, to the Mediterranean region from Central Asia due to the Central Asian blocking during the winter season. So solid, uh, you, here the blue dots actually shows the genesis point of the storm center. And red points shows the lysis, where it actually finished, the lysis points of the storm center. So we can see, clearly see how the storm, uh, storm center actually comes in, this, in the study domain. Now, this is a climatology of the storm, uh, storm tracks for 67 years from 1952 uh, up to 2000. Uh, 60, uh, sorry, 16, and this is the precipitation uh, uh, rainfall climatology over the study domain. So we can see here the storm center maxima, and even uh, in our previous presentation from last few days, I have observed there are actually three storm tracks uh, maxima during the winter season. One over Pacific Ocean, second over Atlantic Ocean, and third over Mediterranean region. There are three storm, uh, storm centers in the northern hemisphere, actually. So the climatology, uh, uh, in, uh, normally uh, from calculation, I observed that an average of 50 storm centers every winter season passes through this uh, uh, through the study domain. Okay, and the precipitation pattern also helps us the uh, how actually it uh, happened because mostly precipitation you will see will happen during, uh, near to the uh, water bodies. If sometimes the storm center is very strong over the northern, northern Europe, for example, but there is very less precipitation because of the, the uh, source of moisture is is, uh, is not near to the to the storm center. But it helps here. If, even if um, trough can also generate the heavy precipitation at this region. So we have selected only two things. We just selected the storm centers and even troughs with certain criteria we have we have defined uh, in the in the storm tracking model. So this is the climatology for storm tracking and this is climatology for uh, precipitation. Now, uh, our main goal, objective. So Euro-Mediterranean storm tracks frequency time series actually. I have selected the index of the storm frequency in the study <coughs> domain and then I have correlated with the ENSO phenomena, Nino 3.4 region. So in the start, when I just take the simultaneous correlation, I found the correlation value was not so high. It was just 0 0.17. So there was no reason to describe the interseasonal relationship between ENSO or uh, uh, and the, uh, storm, tracks in, uh, storm track index over the Euro-Mediterranean region. Then I just tried to check the intertidal relationship. So I, I took the laminar uh, sliding correlation, I, and I, again I found there are sometimes there are uh, uh, the graph is shows the positive values, sometimes negative values. So there was no point to decide is it intertidal relationship is, is available or not. Then finally we have decided to take a multidecadal relationship. For this, I took the 21 year sliding correlation between the storm track frequency index and uh, Nino 3.4 SST index. Then we found a relationship here. So it was. It is clear from here. We can see before 1980s, uh, before 1985, the relationship is negative, but it is not significant. After 1985, the correlation uh, becomes positive, and it is uh, uh, significant. So. I, after that, after this relation, I decided to uh, split my analysis in two parts. The first period from 1950 to 1979, and the second period from 1987 up to 2016. 
So in this way, we can uh, see because uh, uh, it, uh, the, the split of the periods based on, 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 on sliding correlation uh, graph. So here we can see when you took the simul uh, simultaneous correlation before uh, after this period between uh, uh, ENSO index and the storm frequency index, I found the correlation was <coughs> minus 0 0.24, which is not significant. But when I took this correlation for uh, uh, from 1987 to 2016 between storm track frequency below, so the correlation value becomes uh, positive and it is actually significant. The most significant thing is that the, the difference of the two correlations, first period and second period is significant and the departure value is 0 0.64. But for storm intensity, the right one, shows that it was it was having a positive relationship with uh, with M2 even in the first period and even in the recent period but it uh, the difference of the two is not so much high so our focus was over this change how the storm frequency relationship is uh, has been changed this is for example the special correlation between M2 index and storm intensity over the study domain we can see positive relationship with the with the storm intensities, and this is in the recent period from 1987, this correlation between ENSO and storm intensity further enhanced. So vice versa, I just take the correlation with the uh, storm frequency index with the SST, and it is clear from this relation you can see in the first reference period from 1950 to 1979, the correlation was with Central and Eastern uh, Pacific uh, Ocean SST was negative, but it is it is uh, it was not it is not uh, significant. But in recent period, from 1987 to 2016, the correlation surprisingly was positive, and it is significant at 95 percent. Uh, uh, I have used student t test. So later on. I have correlated uh, correlate ENSO index with the 200 hectopascal geopotential height in two different periods based on our sliding correlation graph. So I found during the previous period, the jet stream, uh, you can say, the subtropical jet stream path was more uh, northward uh, in the uh, study domain. So the situation was not favorable for the storm, storm centers to enter in the study domain. But in recent period, you can see here, as in, in the previous lectures, uh, Dr. Davis Strauss also mentioned, and uh, I also have taken the reference uh, from his study, we can see the blocking which normally prevails over Atlantic Ocean. It actually shifts further eastward and little southward over the Mediterranean or Southwest uh, uh, Mediterranean region. So it actually helps to storm centers to enter from the west, western side in the uh, Euro-Mediterranean region. But major change happened over, over, over the eastern uh, Euro-Mediterranean region, where the anomaly value, anomalies values uh, become negative, and uh, the subtropical jet, the second component. Actually, during winter season, there are two components of subtropical jet stream which prevails, one over North Atlantic Ocean, second over Middle East. So this jet stream over Middle East also shifts southwards during the warm year. And it eventually helps to develop, uh, to take place or to develop the more some centers over East Mediterranean and uh, Euro, uh, Eastern Euro-Mediterranean region. So the so anomalous warming as uh, from the previous study, so I have observed that they mentioned the anomalous warming in Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean during the MSO events causes an equatorial equator shift of subtropical jet because storm centers always move along the northern part of the subtropical jet. So if subtropical jet will shift southward, then eventually the storm center will also shift to southward. And this is actually benefit, uh, you can say, have the benefit for the storm centers during the early New Year to go through the uh, 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 Mediterranean, uh, uh, Western Medit uh, Euro Mediterranean uh, region. So, same pattern 
uh, also reflected over in the at the 1000 uh, hectopascal we can see here how the uh, sorry. 1000 when i took the i have took the uh, uh, correlation between ENSO index and 1000 uh, hectopascal geopotential height i found the same change is also reflecting at the surface during the uh, two periods so this rec recent period is most favorable for the storm activity in the euro mediterranean region so this hypothesis finally i took the i have took the storm composite uh, and so composite of storm frequency this figure shows so we can see here during the el nino years we can, we will see we can have we have more storm frequency activity over uh, over the study domain and at the same time the precipitation composite and so composite for precipitation also uh, uh, reflecting the almost little bit same uh, pattern in, in the study domain so storm activity at 200 hectopascal for example there is storm center it always give precipitation in southern and southeastern part of its center so it is but uh, consider huh, now just few days before in, in my lab i just try to check because before this i just took the composite for the recent period from 1987 to 2016 and there was uh, uh, no information for me because gpcp data set was available from i think 1979 so now i just checked from the uh, cpc from our, our lab during these days so i found the same confirmed the same change even in cpc data set so you can see here the press elino composite during the first period from 1950 to 1997 there is a negative uh, anomalies actually not negative anomalies are dominating but in recent period during the elino composite shows the positive signal with precipitation so it is clear that during winter season if there is a El Nino phenomena, uh, I mean the, uh, the warm uh, SST in the central and eastern uh, uh, Pacific Ocean, we will have, we can have more precipitation over Euro Mediterranean region. So, this one? So the, the, the data set the data set is different this is gpcp the other one is cpc i just actually to try to uh, confirm that the cpc because before this i was having no cpc data set so i just tried uh, two days before to show cpc also showing the same signal or not i'm not sure they should be so different it's just a doubt uh. Can ah. it be in Europe where we have good stations data or whatever, or even the satellite data? I mean, could they be so different? Maybe, yeah, we can check. Yeah. And also not consistent with, uh, in Portugal, you would always expect an increase of rain for the rain. Yeah. Here's not the case, but if you look at the previous Yes, sir. This is this is also comforted. Uh, com yes, I also, I also. It is just for uh, uh, the my satisfaction. I because I found a new data set with me in the lab, so I just try to see the same uh, change is also reflecting in this data set or not, or it is just the artifact of the data set. So it can be judged by using the. Uh, you are right. We can also use uh, the observational data set to to verify these things. For example, station data set. It is available. For recent period especially so we can check this so conclusion of my, my study was that multi-decadal changes uh, clearly shows a phase shift of the ENSO impact over euro mediterranean storm tracks frequency and so associated significant changes are noted in the upper and lower troposphere in recent period with respect to the earlier period these changes may largely influence the uh, storm activity and storm intensity which consequently affects the precipitation anomalies over the euro mediterranean region and the last and most important these findings can have more important implications in euro mediterranean seasonal predictability this is our study which we have published from this 
uh, study, and that's it. Thank you.